Hey folks, welcome back to the Portable Gamer, welcome back to European Truck Simulator 2, and welcome back to Carl Scrona. So, if you're keeping score at home, you're saying to yourself right now, Ill Will, Ill Will, what are you doing, man? It's Friday, where's the MotoGP? Where is the Formula One? Well, I am in motion yet again. I am the Portable Gamer, you know, and I am not able to, uh, It something went down with my, I have a plug-in SSD drive. And I forget that I have some Steam games on that SSD drive rather than on my main internal SSD drive. Tell you what, let's let's get to driving while we're talking. No, no, let's not. Let's do this first, because I always forget to do this. Anyway, Steam games can be kind of big, 20, 30, 40 gig. So I have several of them at, on an external SSD to save space on my internal SSD. Well, that SSD went in the bunker before the hurricane and when I brought stuff back out of the bunker I forgot to bring that SSD so I don't have access to MotoGP or either of my F1 games so today when you're seeing this Friday I'm recording it on Thursday you will see it on Friday and no racing on Friday well I'll get it sorted out I'll figure it out I typically post ETS on Saturday so what I'll do is get my hard drive tomorrow for me Friday and record some some MotoGP and some F1 and have it to you on Saturday. So we'll just trade Friday for Saturday. Right, that is one thing on my list. Second thing on my list, we did, we were in our next-gen Scania, and I said I was thinking about a 4 Series. Well, blammo, that is a 4 Series. And I realized that is full circle. That is back to the truck that we had in the very first episode of ETS2, which was my very first episode of any YouTube videos like seven months ago. If you want to compare, like, from the acorn grows the mighty oak, go back to the very first episode that I posted many, many months ago, and I've done it a couple times just to compare the difference. But we are in a 4 Series, and I believe it is a 124. I think that's how their naming convention goes. It is a 12-liter engine in a 4 Series, which would make it a 124. I did go blacked out down below, blacked out wheels, and plastic and paint on the lower half of the truck so it's all blacked out blacked out wheels on the trailer but yeah man i think that's a cool look and i do have a sound pack in this truck so it's going to have a nice sound to it happy about that and what else is on my list uh oh let me show you this before i forget so if we go here there is a dlc now for krona trailers and if you go into the trailer dealer there's now an option up above. Whoa, there's two options up above. Interesting. Okay. Craker is new as well. So this buyable trailer stuff is really coming along. These are the Krona trailers. I did buy one. And then these are the Obel Obelino trailers. Krona is a DLC. Craker, hmm. You know what? I think this just came in today as a, it's a mod I, want to, I think this might even be the cast because I saw workshop items update today. I think cast trailers, which I already have as, a, as an installed mod, may have just added this. Okay, first I'm seeing of it. Uh, and then Krona is a paid DLC through SCS. And then Obelino, I don't qualify for any of them yet, but this is definitely a mod from a private modder. So that's Krona, and I did we go into trailer manager i did buy and build one and it looks like that right there so they are the buyable trailers are really sort of uh coming together i guess so there's that um yep i think that's it is there anything else oh there's there's one other thing and then we'll get rolling i notice in my videos you can very often hear this sound and that sound is, I have, uh, I wear a, a watch and I have a, a memorial bracelet, which is actually a guy named Harry T. Wilson, a Marine named Harry T. Wilson, who died uh, in, in theater the day I was born. And I wear a memorial bracelet with his name on it to remind myself that uh, I have chances that other people didn't get. I've had an opportunity to live, uh, and maybe other people have not. Their life has ended sooner than mine, you know what I mean? So I wear that to remind myself that uh, 
every day really is precious. And you've got to... Wow. You hearing these leaf blowers? Timing, man. Uh, I wear that to remind myself that every day really is precious. And don't waste time. Because there are other people who would love to have, I'm sure, just a little more time. And they can't. They're gone. So... That's that sound. I've thought about um, taking it off, trying to remember to take it off, but honestly, I just forget. And so you'll hear that little clink, that little jangle every now and then. It is what it is. I am so sorry about these leaf blowers. Um, you know, I could start the episode again, but the problem that I have with that, let me tell you why I don't do that. The problem that I have with that is, uh, and I never would have never would have thought this before I started making YouTube videos, but being spontaneous, I feel like it's got to be, it's got to be spontaneous. I'm not an actor. I'm not a performer. I'm just a gamer. I really like gaming. I really like sim gaming. And what you hear is what you get. What you see is what you get. So the idea that I would start the video over again and then come back in and tell you all the things that I just did but try to do it again as though it was the first time to me that's performing and it's fake and I'm not a I'm not a performer you know like let's try it again from the top I just can't do it can't do it and I won't do it so uh, so rather than start again I'm just going to I'm going to fight through these leaf blowers and it is what it is what else is going on? Uh, Jazzy Cat. Jazzy Cat. Jazzy, Jazzy Cats. Has updated, oh, the painted BDF pack. And the painted... Painted truck traffic? Or regular truck traffic? I can't remember. But there was a patch that was required. And now there's a new... There's a new pack. Oh, that's nice. Now there's a new pack... And I don't know if the patch is still required, not, not a patch, but like a fix. Uh, initially there were some problems with textures, but now the entire pack has been updated and I don't know if the, if the other is still required. I don't know if it is or not, but I'll find out. Uh, I'll find out after we record by disabling it and if the game crashes, then yes, it is still required. And if it runs just fine, then no, we don't need it anymore. So that is what's going on. Oh, also, we are running Summer Weather uh, by Grimes. He has begun updating his... He does a lot of weather. He also does some rebuilding. He does a Paris rebuilding. He did a Germany rebuilding, which I don't think is required anymore because SCS has rebuilt Germany. A lot of new buses. Are you seeing these? I'm seeing Jazzy Cat is on it. I'm seeing a lot of new buses. Um, yeah, uh, Germany rebuilding, no longer required because uh, SCS has, I guess, re rebuilt or is beginning to rebuild Germany. So, uh, that is not required, but he makes weather packs, he makes, uh, he makes a really cool mod that I can't use right now. I think it's, for the moment, it is broken. But he makes a really cool mod called Building Lights. And what it does, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but when you pull into a city in... ETS in the middle of the night. It can be 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, and every light in every window in every building will be on. And once you notice it, it really looks bad, really looks fake. Because, you know, maybe 7 or 8 p.m. there'd be a lot of lights on, but not at 3 o'clock in the morning. So what his building lights mod does is it turns some of those off. I don't know how. I don't know how. But it turns some of those off, and they it really adds to the immersion. It makes cities look a lot more realistic. And again, you don't really notice it until you notice it, and then you can't ever not notice it again. So, uh, that hasn't been updated yet. But summer weather has. I figured it's still summer. Let's do it. So that is new. I'm running the... I just updated Reshade and Sweet FX. Reshade is up to, I think it's 3.4.2 or something. But that's updated. And the combination of summer weather uh, by Grimes and the new reshade, I think the game looks really, really good right now. So you have to let me know what you think. I think it looks fantastic. Our frame rate, uh, maybe not where I would like it to be. We're in the mid, mid to high 40s. 
I would like to see that a little higher. But what can you do? Uh, the game itself has patched up. We are 1.32.3, he said confidently. Maybe we are. I don't know. It, it's patching up every couple of days. It's still 1.32, but it's continuing to patch up a little bit, a little bit as they're getting everything buttoned up. I'm really looking forward to the full public release once we come out of beta, because soon after that, then we will have pro mods and we can get pro mods going again. So, uh, what else is going on? I think, I think that might be it. I think that might be my whole, everything I got. So, yeah, man, um, moving on, moving around. Uh, gonna be at, uh, at Airbnb for a while, or at a Airbnb, an Airbnb, a Airbnb. Either way, out of the hotel, into Airbnb, and uh, it's always dicey. I don't know. I don't know what your thoughts are on Airbnb. It, it can be awesome. It can be uh, less than awesome. I work with a client, and we typically stay in giant Airbnbs. There's a there's my client and his crew, and then I come in. I'm like kind of a, an addendum to the crew, but it'll be seven or eight or ten of us in a giant Airbnb, and it's it makes so much more sense than a hotel, both price-wise. And it's just really nice to have the use of, I mean, they're, they're small mansions. We're loading a lot of textures, I think, with Grimes. It's about 500 meg, so I think we are going to be loading some textures. Uh, what was I saying? Uh, Airbnb. Yeah, if you got 10 people, I mean, 10 people in a hotel, you can go back and forth to each other's rooms and everything, whatever. But... 10 people in an Airbnb, a, a big mini mansion Airbnb is, that's a hoot, man. That is, it's really an opportunity for, you know, a lot of interaction and, and um, you know, being a team. And you don't get that when you're all spread out in a hotel. So, uh, yeah, Airbnb can be, can be hit or miss. So this one is so far so good. A little bit loud, but you know what can you do? There's been there's a lot of landscaping going on all around North Carolina right now, and the reason is I assume because all the weather that came through sort of blew away everybody's landscaping. So they came by this morning uh, and dropped off a gigantic truck of mulch. Like it's got to be I don't know probably 30 or 40 cubic yards of mulch, and they're spreading it all around because the weather that came through all the rain we just had literally like rinsed away all the mulch and ground cover. So they're getting all that put back in. So yeah, man, uh, what else, what else is going on? Uh, oh, uh, in another week on the 25th, 25th of September, secret surprise game will be deployed. I am, I've seen some, some gameplay of it. I've seen some trailers, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's going to be awesome, but I've been wrong before, you know. Uh, so we'll see how that goes, and whether whether or not it's as good as I think it could be. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a great addition to the channel, and I'm taking a look at a couple other games, and I don't need to like worry about keeping the lid on those. But I looked at eSail. I was thinking about doing some sailing simulation. I've thought about FSX. Uh, and I, you know what, I was into FSX years ago. I was into FSX when it came out, when it was like groundbreaking, you know? And it's, it's a weird sim because it's gone through so many changes over the past, what, 18 years, 14 years? I believe it's still running on the same core engine, but the graphics and everything and the DirectX, everything is, has changed so radically. It's been traded around, different developers have taken a crack at it. Because originally it was Microsoft and then Microsoft stopped supporting it and other people like licensed it or bought it. Oh, you're going, are you? You. Other companies bought it or licensed it or, or whatever. And so it's been traded around, plus it's heavily modded and you can get like mod content. I mean, big mod content, like 20 gig scenery packs, and all kinds of stuff. But it's a sim that I know and 
I don't want to say no in love, but yeah, maybe you could say that. I know it. I love it. So I've thought about bringing FSX in, but I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you want to watch me fly. I'm a, I'm a bit of a flyer. Pilot, I think, is the word we use. We don't say flyer. We say pilot. I'm a bit of a pilot. Uh, I've flown, um, taken, taken the stick a few times in real life in my time. Uh, don't tell the FAA. No landings. Uh, sort of uh, helped out on the takeoff a little bit, but there was an all, always an understanding that, like, be, be very ready to pull your hands and your feet back immediately if you get the signal. So it wasn't like I was, you know, large and in charge or anything. I was just kind of, just kind of had my, had my hands and feet on the controls during the takeoff. So I, I guess I was flying the takeoff, but it was with a lot of assistance. And I've flown in the air a little bit, never a landing. So I do like aircraft and I do like flying and I do like flight sims and I've thought about bringing FSX in or what's the other one, X-Plane. Thought about bringing X-Plane in. I don't know, I don't know. Uh, I, I just don't know if it would work. I tried Rise of Flight, but I wanna say I never actually posted it. I recorded Rise of Flight, but I didn't post it. Um, it it's a tricky sim. And I mean, maybe as I get better at doing this, we'll take a crack at it. I don't know. But it's, uh, yeah, man, I want to bring some other things into the channel. I just don't know what will and will not be appropriate. And man, I, I really feel like the AI is getting better. I really do. I would like to see it. I don't know if this is even possible, but I would like to see it respond to turn signals and beacon lights. I've heard rumors that it actually is, but I think that's just rumors because I really haven't seen that. You know, I, I feel like, oh, there you go. I feel like that's not a true thing, you know, particularly uh, turn signals. So I, I don't know. But I, I definitely feel like the AI is getting better. It certainly seems to be. Uh, we're up to 80 kilometers an hour here. Oh, we're flying. I think I'm going to be able to turn off that fix for the Jazzy Cat trucks pack. I think everything is current enough that it no longer requires the fix. Uh, because I'm, well, hmm, hard to say. I was thinking because I've got the fix turned on. If it doesn't need the fix, wouldn't the fix make a crash? And then I thought, no, because did we make a payment? Oh dear, we did. We're down to 300 euro. All right, no steak dinner tonight, kids. We'll go down to the vending machines at the hotel. So, uh, so I was thinking maybe the fix would make it crash, right? That would be redundant, but probably not. I'm guessing that whatever code was in the fix, right? So my man could post a two or three meg file to make the other 400 meg pack work. Whatever's in the fix is just incorporated into the code for the newest pack and, and you don't need it anymore. So I'll turn those off and see if everything works okay. And uh, yeah, man, other than that, we're just we're doing it. We are doing it. I do like Scandinavia in this game. Probably one of my favorite areas. Um, I like Italy. The is it the Italia DLC or is it just Italy? I look at this guy. What are they doing? Creeping me out is what they're doing. I like uh, Italia. I like Viva France. I mean, some of the gimmicky stuff. I call it gimmicky. I don't know how you see it, but like the nuclear power plants. I don't know. Is it? You think that's gimmicky? I guess it's just an industrial facility. I would like to see them bigger and more imposing. I don't know if you've ever been around a nuclear power plant with the great big cooling towers, but they are massive and they like loom over you like a mountain. I would like to see those bigger with some, you know, blinkier lights on them and things, just to be a little bit more. I don't know. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Viva France I like, but I think Scandinavia is my favorite part of the map. Scandinavia and the UK. And you know, I like Iceland. I'm curious how 
how big and expansive Iceland is going to be in Pro Mods when it comes into 1.32. I know it's, I mean, it's an island, so they can add things to it, but they can't really expand it. And I feel like every version of Pro Mods since they brought Iceland in has had more and more roads. But Iceland in real life, it's couple cities down south and then it's some roads like around the perimeter and I think there might be one or two across the center but for the most part everything is out on the coasts and that seems fairly well fairly accurately represented in pro mods but they're adding some stuff and I don't know Iceland it's um, in a way it's a novelty you know with the, the snowy passes and the wind blowing and stuff it's sort of a novelty but then at the same time it's like no man this is really cool and it's big enough, it's not like just one quick little area and then you're done with it. Uh, it's like the North Cape uh, to the northeast of Scandinavia. There are some long, long roads up there. Like one road in, one road out, you can't loop it. And there's really nothing on that road, so you just need to drive all the way in. Pick up a load and make your way back out. So it's... Uh, it's not just like a, like a, what am I trying to say? It's not just like a, like a blip, you know? It's not just a, a little quick thing and then, oh, you know, oh, hey, whatever, we're done. Like, it's a significant portion of the map. It's a kind of a significant commitment of time and effort. And that's the way Iceland feels to me, that it's not just one quick little pass with snow on it. Oh, see there, we, you know, we gave you some snow, that it's a, a meaningful kind of place to go spend a few hours uh, driving your truck and I do like that and I, I also like it's gonna sound weird but I like that you can sort of go into Iceland one way and come out another I, I sort of like to go in from the UK travel around Iceland drop off some jobs and then go to Scandinavia or the other way Scandinavia to Iceland and then to the UK but it's not What's the one up north in Norway? Is it Longyearbyen? The island that's like out in the middle of nowhere? It's, I guess in that way, it's sort of like the North Cape. Is you just, you find a job going there, you take it, you pick up another job and you come back. But most of that journey is on the crossing. There's really not a lot of, it's a tiny little island. So it's, a, you know, and I like that. I like that Iceland is a little bit more involved than that. There's a little bit more going on. A lot more going on, actually. In fact, if this game were just Iceland Truck Simulator, I think there'd be... Eh, that's a tough one. I, I was about to say, I think there'd be enough going on just in Iceland to hold my interest, but eh, maybe not. Maybe not. Truth be told, though, we are spoiled because the base game map is big at the DLC it's bigger at pro mods and it is massive so you can definitely I get a feeling when I'm in this game uh, I play it once a week now when I record I don't really I don't really get to play any sim games other than when I'm recording them so it's a little different now gaming is a little different for me I can't just you know post up for the evening and drive my truck for a while because that would throw off like where we are. I'll drive off camera sometimes if we need to advance, get up to the next level or something, but there's really not a lot of recreational gaming in my world anymore. So I play an hour or two a week, down from an hour or two a day. And even so, I still, you know, there are parts of the map that I don't get to for in real time four weeks or six weeks like we're in Scandinavia we haven't been in Scandinavia for the longest time and we might be here for a couple weeks a few weeks of real time only a few deliveries of game time and then if we head out you know, if we head to the UK or back to mainland Europe or wherever then you know we might not see Scandinavia for another few weeks of real time so it's to me it almost has a, a feeling of real life in that you may go somewhere on business or vacation or whatever and you might not see that place again for a minute rather than just constantly you know, seeing the same places over and over. 
I think the only exception might be Reims because as the game patched up we did reset there a few times so I think we've seen quite a bit of Reims and I as a solution to that I think after the second or third time we reset I did start anytime we got reset I would teleport to the city that we were in at the end of the previous episode so there'd be no more of that uh, no more of that Reims it's a lovely town but come on, man. There's only so many times I can go to Luxembourg. Got to mix it up a little. So. Uh, how are we doing on time? Let me lean over here and take a look at my clock. 25 minutes. Perfect. This ought to come in about 35 minutes, I think. Yeah. We got just another couple of minutes till we... Oh. Till we get dropped off here. And, uh, and yeah, we'll just keep it. No, we got. We have to make a turn. We're, we're, I guess, sort of central Scandinavia. And we need to be more to the west. So I would like to either go north or west or northwest. But I don't want to go any further east. Because then we're going to have to go... Ah, sp ah speeding. We are going to have to get back to the west to get back to Bergen. Curious how we're gonna do on money. We've got some. I don't think we haven't. Well, I mean, obviously we don't have enough, but I don't know. We've got some credit available. I guess all we can do is keep making money and keep heading west. When we get to Bergen, we'll either have enough to buy a garage or we'll take out a loan and buy a garage. And if we have enough available credit, maybe we'll also buy one of those Scandinavian trailers. There you go. Now, I, I've been skinning my trucks. I have not been skinning my trailers. It's no harder to skin a trailer than it is to skin a truck. So it's definitely something that I could do carefully. It's definitely something I could do. I just haven't done it yet. But I need to get around to doing that, I think. All right, set the cruise control. I'm trying to get my wipers going a little faster. There they go. And where did we say we are going? Stockholm. Yeah, that's right. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So we'll get this dropped off and then... Uh, I don't know. We'll take a look. I don't... I don't think we're going to level up. We're right in that nowhere zone where we're... We need a ton of XP to level up and our jobs are... We're not getting the big XP jobs yet. But we're also out of the basement where, you know, when you first start the game, one job can level you up one, and sometimes two, two levels, I guess. One bunch of XP can get you a couple promotions. We're in the, the dead zone, where it takes four or five or six episodes to level up. But we'll be, we'll be at level 36 soon enough. I think. Is it 36? 35. It's 36, isn't it? Yeah, I mm, can't remember. Can't remember now. And I think... Uh, hmm, nope. I was... I was curious what Grimes weather looks like with... Reshade turned off, but I'm not going to mess with it right at the moment. Maybe I'll do that off camera. town to go? Or are these the outskirts? Uh, could be outskirts. This is right up around where the Scania facility is. Is it not? I seem to remember this traffic arrangement here. This looks kind of familiar. Yeah, we just mm, I tried to look at that sign as we passed underneath it. I think that sign indicated that's where the Scania test track is. We are, I'm going to have to compare with and without the Grimes weather. We are kind of taking a beating on frame rate. It still looks pretty good. I take it, but not where I'd like it to be. But you know what? It never is. 
It never is. Until I'm at a solid 100 FPS at all times, you know, everything maxed out, ultra graphics, I still will always find something to complain about. That's just gaming, yo. It's that gamer life. Well, we're here, more or less. Let's get this dropped off. And I do feel like we're getting paid less for deliveries with our own trailers. And I don't know if that's because we are delivering with our own trailers or if they've changed the economic modeling and all jobs are paying less, but we've just done everything with our own trailers since 1.32. Right? You see what I'm saying. You see what I'm getting at. Although I have to say, well, there's a little scenery load right there. I have to say, well, two things I have to say. One thing is, no more lag spikes, sir. No more lag spikes, which I'm, I could not be happier. Um, you know what, I'm gonna do a thing. I'm gonna drive around here and get these discoverables. We can cross those off our list. Uh, no more lag spikes. And I'm super, super happy about that. And what was the other thing? Ah, I already forgot. I already forgot. So it goes. All right. Can we get there this way? I think we can. And I think that looks like a Scania dealer flag. Am I seeing that right? Oh, and it's written on the side of the building in giant letters. I'm trying to spot this little flag up here. Is that Scania? Is that Scania? And like, meanwhile, giant letters. Oh yeah. So, let's drive around now, and there's one more. It's gotta be a recruiting agency, so let's drive around the block here. How are we doing on time? 32 minutes, perfect. Just threading my way through traffic here. Right, so here's our recruiting agency. Are we going to get it? Or is it down this other street? Yeah, I think we're going to make a turn to get to it. Um, you want to do it? Let's do it. It's right there. Oh, it's like right there. Uh, we'll do it. Ah! We'll do it. We'll go around the block. Okay, we got another light across the street in traffic there so I can see it. Um, yep. Man, where's my, uh, where's my vape? Oh, it's on the other side of the room. Okay. No vaping at the red light. Sir? That is just not cool. And this will, uh, this might actually work in our favor because we'll be able to make a right turn into the yard instead of a left. Okay. No problems with anything. Uh, everything seems to have worked okay. The Grimes uh, maybe slowing down our frame rate a little bit, but Grimes. Doesn't seem to be causing any problems. The new Jazzy Cat packs seem to be working okay. And I'm thinking that the that, that Craker that just showed up, I don't think that's base game. It might be, but I don't think it's base game. I think that's cast and it's workshop content that was previously just trailers that would get assigned to you when you picked up a job. And I feel like they are now uh, available to buy. I think. Could be wrong. I've been wrong before a bunch of times. Ask me about Thailand. Mistakes. Oh, I've made them. Right. 
so here we go. I keep talking about this new system. I'm hoping to have it in hand. Sir? I'm hoping to have it in hand. Oh, another two weeks. Mid-October. And you will... Oh, you'll hear about that. Is this it? Or is it around the corner? This is it. Okay. Had to break the immersion there for a minute, but I wasn't sure if we needed to make a right and then turn in, or if we could turn in here. Answer is... Yes, we can turn in here. I know people can do this with just the mirrors from inside. I have. In fact, some of my earlier episodes, I was handling it no problem. And then somewhere, I lost my mojo. Not even kidding. I, like, lost the ability to park the truck from inside. What can you do? But, next best thing, cover your ears, darling. We got the beeper. And I love this 4 Series. This is the RJL 4 Series. And it's essentially the RJL Scania with some slightly different bodywork on it. Uh, but I love it. And, you know, initially I was running without a skin. Back the first episode, I was just running with uh, metallic gray paint. But I actually really like but I feel like we're kind of locked in with skins now, and it's important to uh, continue flying the flag, so to speak. Continue representing the brand of Joueur Portable. And if you don't know the story of how we ended up a French trucking company, there's really no story at all to it. When we got the, what was it, patch 1.30. Patch 1.30, the first pack with the special transport. I'll turn off the wipers here. Wipers off, brake is set. Brake is set. Brake is set. Engine off. Here we go. When the first patch came in that featured special transport, you had to pick a new city. You had to start a new profile. And I wanted a city that would allow us access to the special transport cargoes. And that's like Reims, Liege, Rotterdam, a couple others. I just randomly picked Reims. And ever since then, we have been Jouer Potable, a French trucking company. Folks, thanks for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of European Truck Simulator 2. And we'll see you next time. Take care now.